Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the chart accent bar chart this time. Now, previously, we've looked at the chart accent line chart. In this video, we're going to be looking at the chat chart accent bar chart. The description, really, everything is pretty much the same as the line chart. Same idea of what you're going to do. There's going to be a few differences that you'll find here. The fact that it's a bar chart is a major one. But it's really, again, a custom bar chart that allows you to add in your own rich annotations at multiple levels within inside of the chart. So you have the ability to highlight, as you can see on the right hand side, you can highlight certain data points or certain bars or columns, really a column chart here. You can highlight certain data series where you can highlight multiple values and, and highlight those. You can also look at certain ranges and you can add things like average lines. You see average of Seattle there. I'll show you how to do that one in this one as well, where you can actually add in your own little lines and how you can use a small little formula language that they have built in to be able to return back things like an average or a median or a max or a min, that sort of thing you can do within inside of the chart. So there's some interesting things that we'll be able to do within this one. But same idea, we're actually going to even use the same data set that we did with the chart accent line chart. But we're going to show you how you can do it with inside of the chart accent bar chart this time. So let's go ahead and move on over to the Power BI desktop and walk you through it. All right, so as we get started with the chart accent bar chart, of course, we're going to need to have a data set. So we're going to go up to the get data section and we're going to pull in some data from Excel. Now, this is actually going to be the same data set we used in a previous example, this monthly state sales example. So I'll select that and click open to bring this now into the Power BI desktop data model. We'll use the spreadsheet here called sales. So I'll go ahead and select sales and you can see the results here on the right hand side. And then I'll choose to load this into our data model. Now I described a bit of the problem with using the chart accent line chart previously and how you had to actually have the different series could not be stored as a categorical field. You actually had to bring in the three separate measure columns. So I couldn't have a state column here and then the revenue for each of the state you actually have to have them separated out like this, which is a little unusual. Not a big fan of that. Um, that's also the case here with the bar chart as well. So no difference with that. Just so you're aware of it here, you're going to need to separate them out. If you have multiple series that you want to show, you're going to have to have them as separate measures. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click load to bring this into our Power BI data model. And once we do that, we'll bring in the chart accent bar chart by going up to the custom visual section inside of the Power BI desktop and choosing to bring it in from the store. So I'll select from store here. And then we'll choose to search for the chart accent. And if I search that, you'll see the two different types of chart accent charts that are available. Uh, the line chart, I already have a previous video on. The bar chart is going to be our new one that we're going to work on. So we're going to go ahead and select the chart accent bar chart, select add to see it added to the visualizations window over here. And I'll click OK. Now we'll add this visual to our design surface by just selecting it and making it take up a large majority of the design surface for this example. And then we'll start to bring in the data that we want. So we'll start to bring in something like the month and we need to have some kind of metric on here. So I'll bring in, in addition to the month, I'll bring in California, Florida, New York. And you can see how it affects our chart here. where We can see the different series that appear and the legend that appears in the top right hand corner. Just like you could do with the line chart, you can also add different ranges that you want to highlight. So say for example, I wanted to highlight the range from the top end of the chart here to all the way down to roughly 2 million. You can highlight that area here if you wanted to. And you can see it's returned back that area and it's showing me on the right hand side the range of values that I have selected. You could also change the color of that if you wanted to. So maybe I make it more of a green and make the opacity a little lower so that I can still see the green bars behind it. it makes it a nice little way to be able to view the data. You can also though, however, move the label. So you can see this label showing right here is showing the range of values that are being highlighted. I can move that from the top right up here or here to something like maybe the top left. And so I kind of shifted over here some if I wanted to. And then I can adjust the label. I can leave the label, the, the, the number signs here, identify the number formatting, but I can actually add in front of that if I wanted to something like uh, we could say that we want to add in it the high volume prefix, something like that. So that way we can see both text and number here. And we could also eliminate the decimal places if we wanted to just by doing a quick little format on the decimal places right here. Okay. You could also increase the font size, so I can bump that up if I wanted to, maybe a notch or two. I'll bump that up to 15 point font. And you could put a line above it if you wanted to. There's some little formatting things you can do there. All right, so that's nice. We got one in here. You could also add in ranges vertically as well, though. So we kind of had a horizontally facing range of values here, but we could also select values vertically, so going up and down. And you can do that by going to your x axis, and you can kind of highlight certain ranges of values here. So I can highlight between March and November. Uh, by the way, there's kind of a clear problem with the data set there. If we got March to November, but we only highlighted three months, that's probably not good. 
So there's something we need to fix here first before we go any farther, which is the order of our months. Look at the months on the bottom. To fix the sort order of our months, we're going to need to go to our month column here. And in our month column, we're going to go up to the modeling ribbon on the top of the Power BI desktop. And we're going to go to the sort by property here. And we're going to change the sort by property to sorting to instead sort by the calendar month number. So it'll sort by the numbers 1 through 12 instead of the alphabetical sorting it's doing right now. So if we select that, it should resort and fix our column names correctly, or our, our headers here. And then so what we can do now is I can actually highlight multiple months, and you can see highlighting those multiple months appears in the correct order. The other thing that we can do, though, is you can X, of course, you can kill any of those highlights if you wanted to just by hitting the X. You can also just highlight a single month if I select October here. You can see that it's going to focus in on October, and we can come up here and say, well, October is really our peak season where we have the highest values for each of the states. And so we can come over here and we can rename this and we can call it something like, uh, select that again, we can call it something like peak season. Same thing we did in the line chart earlier, you can also do here. But I might want to do something like change the color. So rather than showing it as this kind of damp gray, we can come in and we can change it to something more like a brighter orange. And then we can change the opacity of that as well if we wanted to. Next, what I might want to do is maybe I want to grab another range. Maybe uh, we'll go from that 2 million value down to 1.7 million. And so I can select this value, drag down to 1.7, which is uh, roughly here. And then you can see it show up here. And by the way, you can manually change those ranges here. If I wanted to, I can come over here and overwrite that from 1.71 to just 1.7 million. And it'll adjust that for me as well. And then, of course, what I can do is I can say I want to realign this. So right now it's right aligned. Let's tell it that we want to shift it to the left like we did in the previous example. Change the formatting and bump up the text size by one like we did in our previous example. And then we may want to call this one a medium volume set of states. And then you can do some things where maybe you want to make it darker or change the color so it's easier to read. You can certainly do some things like that. We can also change the color of the gray that we're looking at right now. So right now the value range on the bottom is showing as gray, but we can come down to the bottom and change that from gray to something like, let's say, for example, a blue. And then you can see, of course, that now our blue lines aren't visible and we can lower the opacity so we can still see them and the chart is still usable. The other thing you'll kind of notice, the same thing that happened with the act, uh, chart accent line chart, is be the order of operations with these annotations does matter. And so what you're seeing here is because we did the top range and then the up and down range and then the next range below the blue one, because the order that we did them, it kind of looks like they're sitting on top of each other kind of odd. I would expect to see the orange one or the yellowish one on top of everything. But it's not right now, I and mean, that's just because the order of operations of how these things appear on the right-hand side and the annotations in the top right. But we can change that. If we wanted to, we can actually shift and move the Y range above the X range. And then you can see now, if you look closely, it's a little easier to read that uh, peak season range that we created. And you can kind of shift things around if you wanted to to kind of get a better look at it so you can see the difference. But you can tell that it looks like the blue range is sitting on top of that little orange range. So you can readjust these things to actually make it easier to read. Okay. All right. A couple other things that we might want to do here. Uh, we might want to select a specific data point. So I see there's this one really low data point right here. You can actually select individual data points if you wanted to and highlight those individual ones. And so I can highlight this one if I wanted to. I can change this and say maybe we hired a new sales rep here. I can do something to identify what the deal was, what the problem was. I could even highlight it and then bring in something like an arrow if I wanted to and then you know draw out to that and say what, what was the deal, what was going on at that time. We can bump up the, the size of the arrow if we wanted to and really emphasize it and point out that there was some kind of issue we were aware of, like maybe we hired a new sales rep. So we can put some annotations in here so it's really clear what's going on with our data. And we can turn off, maybe we want to turn off the rectangle around it so it's just text here that's easy to see. And of course you can adjust the size, the color, so it's even easier to read as well. All right, now one of the things you might want to do is maybe you actually want the rectangle on it so that you can see it on, on top of the bars that we have here. And so what I could do is I can make the background color of it white, or you can make it any color you really want to here. And then I, if I make it white, for instance, I may want to change the opacity so that it's not see-through anymore, and then it's very easy to see here. And then you can resize it, of course, be able to fit the full text in there. All right, so pretty easy to do. Nice little way to be able to make things visible, easy to see inside of the data set. You can also select multiple ranges as well. So if, say, for example, I wanted to select all of California. I can click on California here, and it's automatically going to highlight all of California for me. Or maybe I want to see Florida. I can click on all Florida. Now I'm actually selecting all of 
Florida and California separately here as separate annotations. And you can remove any annotations you don't want by coming up to the top right and actually hitting the X button on them, and it removes the selection that you had. So you can kind of play around with that some if you wanted to. Now, well, let's say, for example, you wanted to get a trend line across all of the series that you have. If you wanted to do something like that, you can select each of these in the legend up at the top and hold down Shift, and you can multi-select those regions so you have all three of them selected. And then what you could do is you can actually do something like maybe you want to not show the labels. So I can turn off the labels so the labels aren't distracting. And maybe I want to turn off the marker selection so I can turn that off. And so now it's not highlighting them. But what I do want to do is I want to turn on this option on the bottom for a trend line. And so I can turn on the trend line for the top section here, or to show in the top. And I can even add a label to it if I wanted to. I can make it really clear. You can maybe turn off the label and then add text instead. So you can do some things like that. I'm going to leave the label off. I can add in a text box to just give a label for the line if I wanted to. You have quite a few things you can do here. But this way, it actually allows you to add in a trend line, for instance, that is across all the different series that you have. Okay, So you can have some nice flexibility in here. The last thing I want to show you is you can also add individual lines. So say, for example, I wanted to add my own line. Let's get rid of the trend line for a moment. If you, By the way, if you want to just hide a trend line or hide an annotation, you can uncheck it rather than deleting it. If you hit the X, that'll delete it. If I uncheck it, that'll just unhide it, or that will hide it, as I should say. And so what I can do instead, maybe as I don't want the trend line right now, but what I do want to add in is maybe an average line. And I want to see an average of all of my values in California. And so what I can do is I can select somewhere on the chart, and then you can see it's added in a line. Now this line is just a, a hard-coded line in here that's showing that particular value that I happen to select. But what I can do is I can come over here to the line section in the y-axis, and I can tell it that I want to type in something like uh, average. And you'll notice as you start to type in average, or AVG, that you get these little things that pop up here, here that guide you through creating a formula that shows the average. And so if I want to see the average of California, I'll go ahead and select average of California here. It formulates the average. It's displaying the average of California. And then I can actually come here and I can label it. And I can say this is, let's say, uh, California average. That way I can label it very clearly. So people know what it is. If I wanted to, I can change the formatting, the size, the font. This, all that stuff can be adjusted in here. But that way I can add in something like an extra line here if I wanted to. You have some flexibility where you can do more than just average if you wanted to. If I wanted to, instead of an average, I could say that I actually want to see the median. And so I can do a median here if I wanted to. I could also do something like maybe the max. So if I typed in max here instead, you can see max will shift up the line to the top where the max entry point is for my California records. But you really have some flexibility. You can do quite a few things here with the little formula that you have. I'm going to go ahead and stick with this being the average since I went ahead and labeled it as that. Go ahead and rename that to average, and you'll see it looks like it actually lost my formatting. So I can come back in here and call this average for California. Now, there's not really a ton that you have to do inside the format section. You can take a peek over at the format section. Most of your design is going to be within inside of the editor itself. You see, you can reset and get rid of all the annotations, undo, redo, lines, circles, images if you want. Um, there's only one thing underneath the format section that you can affect. If I go to the y-axis here, you can change the starting and ending point of the y-axis. That's the one on the left here. You can also label it. So if I want to call it, instead of calling it measure, maybe I call it total sales. You can do that. And let me actually try that one more time. Total sales. Now, you might have noticed that it looks like there's a little, little quirk there that as I rename the text, it also kind of enhanced or changed the way this graph is looking you'll notice that it automatically changed it to 1.5 million as a y-axis. But you can come in here and you can readjust if you wanted to, rather than it being set to auto. I could come in here and hard code it as the starting point to be zero if I wanted to, and that way it kind of readjusts back to where it was. You can really kind of play around with this however you'd like. Now, traditionally, the best practice with charts and the best practice with, with visuals is it can be awfully... Um, I, I guess the word here would be deceiving, <laughs> is if you change this from anything other than zero. If you start the y-axis at anything other than zero, then it's very deceiving as far as your eye on how the, how the data is perceived. But you can change it if you wanted to. You can come in here under here into the start, and I can change it to, uh, let's say, 1.2 million if I wanted to. So that way you can kind of get a better view of the top end of the data since there's nothing below. You can certainly make changes there. You can also change the ending axis here as well if you wanted to. So I can change it to something like, well, let's end it at 2 million. You can adjust that as well, and you actually see values go beyond that if you do something like that. So I'll probably leave that as auto.
I'm going to go ahead and leave this at 1.2 million. Again, not necessarily a best practice to make that kind of change, but it is possible for you to do it. Uh, but do want to highlight that as a feature within inside of the chart as we're demonstrating this to you. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This is the chart accent bar chart this time. And look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.